the last thing I want to talk to you about is uh, kind of the current state of media, right? So, so you've had um, some of the uh, most extreme experiences as a journalist, right? You've literally gone into combat zones, uh, kind of done all of these different things, but you don't work at the New York Times. You don't work at, you know, the Washington Post. Um, talk to me a little bit just how you think of your job and how uh, it's evolved over time and the tools and, and kind of where you think media in general is going outside of those large organizations. Well, I've had somewhat of a irregular experience, uh, to say the least. You know, I, I kind of, you know, for better or worse, I mean, I pole vaulted over some of the things that other journalists have to do. I, I started off my, my career in, in that world uh, working for a small company that I helped found and start up. And uh, now I work for another company, uh, a larger company, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just one cog in the wheel, of course covering veterans issues. Uh, I've covered very, some very niche issues and I've had the luxury of kind of picking my own assignments and to a large extent executing them the way that I wanted to. So I've been very fortunate, very lucky in, in so many ways. Um, I, I do have critiques and criticisms of the media. And I mean, first off, we have to define what we mean by media. Um, this is media, uh, you know, reruns of Friends is media, um, but we're probably talking more about the press, right? Specifically the press. And the biggest problem I, I think it has right now, I mean, is, is that everyone's kind of chasing web traffic. And this was something that Andrew Yang brought up actually pretty prominently. It was pretty funny to see during his campaign is that, you know, we're, everyone's chasing clicks and it's all about clicks. And, you know, and people also complain about the media, but this is the flip side. And I, I would flip that around on them a little bit. I mean, yeah, a lot of the media is, is not good and it's, it's actively detrimental but why do you click on it? Like, why, why do you watch it? Why, why are you consuming that media? Like, if it's true that you just want facts, why don't you just read AP and Reuters and stick to the facts? But you don't. The data shows something different. The data shows that people go af after that content that is emotionally engaging and gets them angry and gets people riled up. So there's a certain amount of individual responsibility on the other hand is that as consumers of media, readers of the news, consumers of news media, you know, we have an obligation to ourselves and our family and our friends to, you know, sort the, the garbage out and focus on, you know, good reporting. Um, so I, I tell people that and they get mad at me when I say that because it kind of interrupts, you know, the, that, the, the idea that, you know, America would be like a Norman Rockwell painting if not for the media. Um, but there are problems, you know, the press has problems. They, you know, uh, the, the, what I was referencing before that, you know, they're chasing click through traffic is, is one of the bigger problems. Um, the 24 hour news cycle is one of the bigger problems that the constant churn of content um, that, you know, everyone has to get it out there and you have to get it first and you have to be writing every day. And when you write every day, you're really not an expert on anything because you're, you're just spread too thin. So there's a lot of problems. I don't know how we come out of it. I mean, honestly, I don't know if, you know, the, the, the boomers out there, they're already lost. Like they have not been able to adapt to this media environment at all. Um, my generation is struggling. I think maybe it's going to be a younger generation that's kind of going to inoculate themselves to it like they're gonna I think they're gonna grow up with a more natural filter of like yeah that's nonsense and just like they're they're gonna be the ones who are not gonna click on it um because they're gonna grow up um with a different frame of reference and kind of sorting out the garbage um but that's also something we could probably teach media literacy in our schools and you know how to verify like is this story true is it false um should I pay attention to this should I not pay attention to this you know, I, I can't tell you how many times a day I have people, you know, trying to get me like, hey, why don't you cover this story? Why don't you cover that story? And it's like, hey, this is like a no name alternative news website. There's no byline on it. There's no, and this is the, the, the most important thing you learn in college. Check the source citations. Where are they? <laughs> if they're not there, why is that? Um, just as very basic media literacy. Those are things we should teach the teenagers in, in, uh, in high schools around the country. And uh, that would do wonders for us, um, you know, just nationally. Yeah, the, the one that uh, gets me is, because uh, I, I agree with you that like the media literacy is much easier to implement when it comes to, uh, if you see like a, um, a website article, right? For all the, the things that you just announced. Um, but the, the one that 
blows my mind and I don't know what the solution is, right? So, so it kind of sucks that like you, you understand the problem but don't have any proposal for a solution um, is the social media content, right? And, yeah. and, and uh, the thing that I saw recently um, that just absolutely caught me off guard was, I, I'm sure you saw this picture of the White House with the lights turned off. Mm -hmm. Right. And there was a bunch of people sharing this photo and they're saying, you know, hey, when uh, when the protesters showed up for demands, you know, the president was turned off the lights and went in the bunker. Right. Or, you know, whatever it was. And like it fit perfectly into the narrative. Right. right. And so for like I saw that probably for three days and thought that was an actual picture. And then after three days mm -hmm. of seeing it, I saw somebody posted an article and was like, hey, that picture is fake. Right. N not fake in terms of it, it's a manipulated photo. It's just from a it's different old. period of time. Yeah. And I was sitting there like wow, for somebody who like, I actually think about this stuff pretty regularly, whatever. I didn't even think twice about like, whatever, because literally there was a media article that said, Hey, the lights went out, he went in the bunker, whatever. And you just naturally make the remember the pictures of the, uh, the Mexican immigrants in the detention facility that were spread around social media. And it turned out it was from the Obama administration. Another great example. Right. And, and so it, like, you, you kind of get into this world of, um, even the people who think about it all day still get tricked. Mess right? it up, yeah. And, mm -hmm. and it's just, we're human. And, and so you almost got to understand, hey, we're not going to solve it 100%, but how do we move it forward in, in a major leap so that we can actually start to get people good information so they can make good decisions and, and really stamp out some of the uh, divisiveness. Uh, but again, to your point, the reason why the media creates a lot of that content is because it works. Right, right. right. <laughs> it's doing and, exactly and, what and, they want. And, and the media, I mean, the, the press also provides a certain amount of fact checking there is some self correction so like you like you know 3 days later the other side of the story comes out and you saw in the mainstream media like no actually that's false um okay you know like you said people are human they make mistakes i've made mistakes it happens um but it can be incredibly dangerous i mean imagine a mistake that you know could incite a riot that could incite an attack that could incite an act of war um it's incredibly dangerous and incredibly scary to think about. And uh, like you, I don't necessarily know what the answer is. Um, maybe that's one of those things that like AI will solve for us as time goes on because it will, the fact checking will happen so quickly um, that it'll be exposed. But yeah, I don't, I, I mean, as long as there are human beings involved in, you know, writing and producing news, there are going to be mistakes in it, uh, you know, from time to time. 